Hi guys, this is Mike Hibbert back with another uh, Python Django tutorial for you. This time we're going to cover a bit more um, in-depth a look at unit testing and how to go about testing most things in your Django applications. Now, we, if, if you've seen the free um, version of this, you'll have come to the point where you, you, you can at least get it set up and know how to use coverage and you can you know where the tests are actually located. Now, for this tutorial, I've set up um, a different project, which basically has um, a, the ability to do a survey. And each survey contains a number of questions. And basically done the, the, the majority of the coding inside of the system. Now, normally you would have done this um, as you go, but for the purposes of this, and to kind of give you an idea of where to you know, get started and what needs testing and how to go about testing those sorts of things I've already built it in advance um, ideally you should be able to do this um, as a, a, a process of writing a test and then writing the code that fulfills the test um, but as somebody who's learning it brand new to be fair that's pretty that's a pretty mean feat to do that because you first of all have to learn what sort of tests need to be done and that's kind of like a chicken and egg situation because you obviously have to write a test to write some code to fulfill it and if you don't want to know what test to write then how are you going to write a code that f f fulfills a test that you don't know how to write it's madness so um, with that I've done what they call test after kind of development in this particular case as you get more experience with the tests and how to, act, how to actually perform them, you will have an idea of what you need to test before you actually write some code. And then you'll have a chance at starting to get into test-driven development because you'll know what kind of tests can be done. Anyway, with that, <clears throat> let's just look over this project. Now, the first thing I've done is I've made my main project, which is, has all its settings, etc., inside of here. Um, all I have inside of this is just a home page which we're going to test um, inside of here I have created some URLs so that we can then um, route things through to our surveys module as well um, there's nothing specific in settings if I just whiz through there and show you what that is so I've done a set of a database um, done a few things for static files template directories have included a normal templates directory and the one for the surveys module um, and then I've included my survey in the installed apps section so not a great deal to see in the settings there the main thing uh, that we're going to look at is the actual module itself the settings or survey module now inside there we've got a create survey template a normal survey template which shows one survey and a surveys template which shows multiple surveys in a list type of thing we've also got some template tags and I've created this template tags module so that we can show how we can actually um, test template tags to see if they actually work and I've created a basic um, template tag that just basically takes a question in and then embeds its text into a paragraph HTML tag with some text in there so we'll test that and see how that works out as well as that we've got forms we've got models and these are basically the survey model which only has a name because survey doesn't necessarily need anything more than that but then we have a question model which has a text uh, ver uh, member and also an answer member and also it has a survey which is a foreign key link through to this survey class here so there's relationships involved so in there we have a tests which is that test file that we had open just before some URLs and these URLs show that we have a one basic URL that points through to the surveys page uh, where the surveys will be listed 
then there's a, a question URL which then takes a survey ID or questions URL takes a survey ID and then displays the survey with all the questions on the page and then there's an add survey page or view that we use to create a survey with and I haven't gone to the extent of adding the add questions section because um, once you've seen how to to, to test um, an add method um, then you'll have a pretty much a, a great idea on how to start with any of that kind of view that takes post information off users forms so <clears throat> in our views file I have um, a number of views in here I've got surveys which basically gets a list of all the surveys that's in the database and then renders them into the surveys template then I have a survey the singular not the plural and this basically takes an argument of survey ID and then gets one single object out of there and puts it in to the context and renders that to the survey template and then finally we have create survey which is mapped to our URL add survey just here and that will um, first of all render a survey form then it will um, check to see if the method is post and if it is then it will take the input from the post form and then check if it's valid and save it so that's the standard how do we create something using uh, a survey or a model form rather so that's the general overview of how the application works so the question is where do we start when we want to try and um, actually test this thing to see if it actually has good coverage and whether it's actually going to work and also set up us uh, a nice list of tests that will trigger if there's any problems in the future so in our tests.py file here um, we start off with a simple test case and you'll probably have a method in here with two tests that are kind of bogus and pointless I've deleted them and put and pass in there so that it doesn't fail when I try to run the tests before now I'm gonna basically add in tests as we go but before that the first thing I want to really do is to kind of discuss what you should be testing now in the last tutorial I, I basically showed you in coverage that it gives you a big long list of stuff now if I just get that list up here this might be helpful in demonstrating what I mean now the coverage reports is 34 percent I thought you 37 percent um, and it lists things like testing Django Python 2.7 site packages Django so all of these things are included in what coverage is, uh, wants to look at however we don't develop Django so that isn't relevant to us most of this stuff on here is not relevant to us at all because we're not testing the Django frame framework all we're interested in testing is our actual code and no one else's so the thing that's most important is this stuff at the bottom now what sort of things can you test well we've got custom views if you write your own views and they have stuff in there that's unusual or you know you just basically want to guarantee that your code works then your code needs testing forms if you've got anything unusual in your forms that you know any special kind of validation or that sort of stuff you're going to want to test that too template tags yep you're going to test those as well because if you've written those yourself they are not a part of the standard code base when it comes to Django uh, content context processors if you've written any of them or any middleware anything like that or management commands anything you like in fact if you implement anything in terms of business logic that's not part of the framework that's the stuff you want to test okay so in our case 
we've got a, a very small module and that shouldn't take us too long to go through that. So I'm just going to close this up and I'm going to start and implement tests. Now the first thing I want to do um, really is to start and test or, or at least set up with some data because what happens when you run the tests is that it doesn't use the database that you're using for development. It creates a brand new one in memory so that it can do the tests. And after the tests are done, it kills that database completely. So it's wiped. So I want to set up a couple of uh, objects that will help me test inside there. So to do that, I need to import the survey and question models so that I can use them. The first thing we do is we define a method inside of this simple test class, which is derived from test case called setup. And inside of there, I'm going to create one survey and I'm going to assign it as a member variable of the simple test class because I need to use it later on. I want to hang on to a, an instance of it. So we just use survey objects to create that. The next bit is I want to create one question, actually to create a couple of questions, but this first question, um, we're going to pass in some text. What's your favorite color with no answer. Um, although we could probably set up some tests later on, um, to do that. And an instance of the survey that's associated with it. So this question, when we call create, I mean, uh, automatically becomes associated with survey, with that survey object, and thus the, the relationships established. And again, I'm going to make another question, and this should then give us at least a couple of questions so that we can count them in the process of testing things like our views. And then finally, I'm going to allocate a client, which I've imported here from Grango, Django test Grango funny word um, and that is basically the client that will help us to test our views it's the thing we use to call the the, the views as if the, we were actually looking at them through a browser okay so the first test um, is to create a survey so can we actually create a survey? Now I know we've done this in the setup, but we want to be able to, to track specifically creating a survey in our test suite. So whilst the setup um, would probably you know, count as a test, I suppose, um, what we really want to do is we want to have a dedicated test just to make sure that a survey can be tested. Um, so that means the model's been tested. Now, Normally, if you haven't written any special methods for this, then a creation test is enough. If you've written special methods that do something unusual that the normal Django model doesn't do, then you'll need to test those methods inside of this, this test as well. Um, fortunately, we haven't, but if we, if we did, then all we would do was check the output and use one of the asserts. So in this case, we're certain that the instance S, which we created here, is an instance of survey. And if that comes out true, then that's fine. And we're quite happy with that. Same goes for a question. We want to create a question um, and then do a quick test to see, is this an instance of the question? Right, so those are very standard and you'll have seen something similar that, to that in, um, in the free tutorial. Next, we're gonna test um, the index. Now that's the index of the views here. So we're gonna test whether it actually works or not. And to do that, we need to use the client. Now we created the client here. So we've now got an instance to it and I'm gonna say client get forward slash and that should be enough to get the home page 
So what that'll do is it'll shoot off um, a pretending to be a web browser. It won't actually do like an HTTP call. It'll simulate that through the framework and basically pull out the HTML markup that should come off with that page. Now, um, there's not a lot of uh, markup on that page. If I just quickly show you what the template looks like. Here we are. So there is just a heading, welcome to our test site, exclamation mark, close, heading. That's enough just to basically sh prove that the page works. Obviously in, in a proper website, we'd have like a full fledged load of markup and then you'd have to either have a, a test to see whether those words existed within there. Um, but in our case, we're just gonna say, first of all, did the request to the server actually work? So this is basically a request object or a response object rather, excuse me. And is the status quo, status code uh, 200, which means that it was successful. Then if that's equal, then there'll be no problems there. We know that test has worked in the simplest sense that we've been able to call the URL. The next thing is we go, is the content inside of that response equal to what we expect to see. And if it's not, then that breaks our test and gives us a warning in future. Now, to test the surveys page, if we go and look at the survey views, surveys page uh, doesn't take any parameters. All it does is it generates um, a surveys variable that's passed through to the surveys HTML template and again we're just going to test to see what we're going to actually call it in the expected way so we expect it to be surveys because of the routing in here now this is the, the default route for that but if you noticed earlier when i showed you inside of the actual main applications uh, urls file we set up this surveys URL here and then it included the URLs from the other URLs file over here. So this statement is effectively tacking on the URLs or prepending them with the surveys part of the URL. So that's why we can say that surveys is actually equivalent to forward slash for the surveys module. Sounds complicated, I know, but Basically, it means that you can namespace your apps using the URL scheme. And that's pretty uh, important for when you want to separate things out. So <clears throat> we check to see the status code's 200, obviously, to make sure that it's actually callable. So we can seek that. Then if we check if the surveys is in the context, so we, where's the view again? Uh, yeah, just here. So we're, so we're saying this context or this set of arguments that we've passed to render the response should be recorded in the response. And if that's in there, then that's a success because it should be in there, should, should be at least one in there because we've already created at least one survey inside of the current testing database. So there should be at least one in there. If there's not, there's a problem with that. Then we do something which might kind of blow your mind a bit. Um, I hope it doesn't, but um, what this does is it does a quick list comprehension. And what it does is it rolls through um, each consecutive instance inside of the surveys list. And it creates a list from each primary key from each survey that's in that list. And then we say, is that list we've ge generated using this list comprehension is it equal to this example list and the answer should be that the list should have just the number one inside of it 
because by default this survey that we've created here its ID should be number one and therefore we should be generating the list of one survey out of there with the ID of one and if that's not true then we know that the listing uh, system of these objects is wrong and then we could do something about that. Next we're going to move on to this questions page. I'm just going to pause for two seconds while I get a drink. Okay, right. Okay, apologies for that because my throat uh, keeps closing up because I've had a chest infection for about a fortnight. But never mind, moving on quickly. Um, right, so we're testing questions uh, page. And on the questions page, if we look at that view, we have the survey right now in our URLs it's actually questions but it turns out to be the survey view and it expects an ID through to there so we are gonna have to somehow pass it through an ID and then we should measure the response to see what's happening because on the view if I just go back we have uh, one survey object that gets passed through inside of the arguments or the context for render response through to the template. So, <clears throat> again, we're going to do this test to see whether that actually is in the context, etc. So, the first thing is we, we create the URL and we embed the ID of our survey in there, which we know is a valid survey that we created earlier. And the response comes back in the R variable. We check to see if the response code is 200, and if it's not, then there's obviously something wrong with the routing. So we need to fix that. In this case, I'm pretty confident it will fix it. Then we want to see is survey in the context? So is it in whatever is listed inside that context? And then after that, we want to be able to do a, a loop through on the questions. Now, these two questions that we created just at the top here in our setup section should then be associated with the survey model and they should be accessible through question set all. Now, if you've seen in the pre-tutorials that there's a, a relationships kind of um, tutorial in there that's how you should be able to get knowledge of how relationships work. But basically it means that the survey object, uh, because the ha there's a foreign key relationship associated, then suddenly survey has a question under underscore set variable allocated to it so that you can access those related models. So what we're seeing in this list comprehension here is for every uh, for every queue or every question in this question set all, which is the list of all questions associated with a survey, for every queue in there, create a list that contains the primary key, and then we should see a list something like that come out, one comma two, and if we assert that they're equal to what we expect to come out and that fails, then we know that there's something wrong with our relationships, or at least with the object that was selected. Right. So, that being done, what's next? Testing the questions URL. Now, <clears throat> this is basically to, to give you a bit of a demonstration of how do you test exceptions inside of the tests. Now, what we can do is we can use the self assert raises survey dot does not exist. Now, how do we do that? Well, we're going to try and access the survey or the, the questions URL, um, but we're going to access it with an ID that's not listed. Um, something that we know doesn't exist in the database 
and see if we can cause it to raise an exception and the exception we're looking for is does not exist and to do that we basically just call the URL with the ID in there and we've put an ID of 2000 in there which I'm definitely sure is not going to be in the database because we haven't created 2000 surveys so at this point we should then get an assertion raised and the assertion that will raise, if you saw this in your output in the Django console, you would see do, does not exist. But the one we specifically want is tied to the, to the model survey. So if we were, for instance, trying to create a, 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 an exception that's associated with it does not exist uh, exception on a question instead, we wouldn't put survey dot does not exist, we would put question because we're trying to catch specific exceptions on specific models. So this being true will create a, or raise an assert and that should pass the test because we expect it to fail. We want it to fail. If this passes or doesn't raise the assert, then we know there's something sadly wrong with the database because we know that that database primary key shouldn't exist inside of there. Right, so the next example I've got for you is how to actually test something like um, a template tag. Now, the render question tag, if I just find it again, is in the survey tags option. And all it basically does is it takes a question as a variable, as an argument, and pulls out the text part of that question and embeds it in some HTML, which it returns as a string. So how can we test that? Well, the first thing we do is we create a question. So we don't necessarily uh, have to save this one because we're not necessarily trying to, to create an object in the database. We just want a sample question object to pass it through. So I'm going to test set its text to that. And then I'm going to create what I expect to be coming out of the template tag. So expected markup is more or less what does actually happen inside of there. But in future, if anybody changes the template tag and it starts generating stuff that I don't expect to come out of there, the tests will break and they will have to fix the code or at least change the test so that it acknowledges the change. So there's, there's, a, layer of, there's a layer of making things visible and even though it might not seem that important to you, six months down the line, if you run the tests again, it's really going to give you a good report and show you what's changed, if anything. So, <clears throat> to pull in the template tag itself, we actually just import it. Now, this is a local import. This just imports in the scope of this function. And it doesn't... It, it immediately drops it after this so it's not available outside the scope of this function so we do from survey temple template tags dot survey tags import render question and that will give us what we need for the tests then we use the question in the same way as you'd use any other function um, and then it will pass back the output in R. Then all we need to do is assert that the expected markup is equal to what's in R. And if that is true, then we're happy because that means our template tags work the way it is expected to do. Um, you could test to see what happens if it's not expected or if the result is not what you expect um, by sending in some bogus data and then that would pretty much work exactly the same way as this is, just you would change the, the inputs. <clears throat> okay, so that's that. I'm just gonna now go back to the console because I want to um, run the tests and see what happens. Now it says here, run seven tests, okay. Now, 
with that I want to run coverage HTML to generate the HTML again because I want to then look at how much coverage we actually have now and this will give us an idea of what else we can do in terms of finding things that need testing. You can see my coverage report has gone up by a few percentage there. If we go right to the bottom for our stuff, you can see the list of things that have been tested are all in there and, and actually got longer. Um, we've got 100% on a lot of things, which is good news. We've tested the survey URLs properly, tests on ta survey tags, they're done. However, the views, if we click on the views, we can see now that there's one outlying view that hasn't been tested yet and it's missing um, a test for three conditions. Um, the three conditions are if the method is post, if the form is valid and what to do if they are not posted or not valid. So we've got three conditions. So everything after this else deals with what happens if it's not a post method or the form isn't valid. So we need to create some tests to actually cover that. So I'm going to close this. We'll go back to the code editor and we're going to add in a new test. Test add survey view. The first test obviously is just a test to see if we can actually um, call the view. Now notice we're using the get method here. Now this will be the the first time that you'll see something different in terms of using the client to get URLs because we're now going to use the post method. Now post does what it says on the tin so to speak. It basically posts information as if you had posted a form to that URL and the form that we're looking to post across is name and now the reason why we're doing that is because in our model our survey model has the name variable and that's the only thing we need to pass through to that view so when we pass into create survey and the method is post which it will be because we're using the post method on our client so this will be true We'll create a survey form from a request post and by the way this request here is it's not like a, a normal HTTP request it's been faked by the system so that we can just do testing hence the client does all of this sort of stuff because that's how it fakes it but we basically pass in through the name uh, favorite cheeses just for a random string to put in there and we are basically uh, again testing to see the status code was 200 just to make sure that it's still called properly even though we're posting to it and using a different method and that might highlight some other problem the next section is Well, no, actually, I think that's pretty much it. So I'll just put that back because I think that's possibly enough to have actually covered all of the options because we've posted to the method. We passed a form with relevant information in there and the form was valid because there was a, a name variable with some content in it. And then also we covered what happens when there's nothing posted. So I think that's probably going to cover. Right, to test that, we'll do the survey test again. Again, we've got eight tests that run fine. And if we just do the HTML coverage again, have a look at the HTML see what the crack is as they say in my area of the world there we go so that's now at 100 percent everything in there has been tested and has been 
deemed to be working. So, <clears throat> right, so one last thing that I wanted to cover, which is very small, is that in previous tutorials, right at the beginning, um, I talked about doing um, what are the world what are they called F fixtures now fixtures if you remember rightly are just basically JSON output that you can get from your um, from the manage command so you would normally go in our case you might go uh, dump data Oh, no you wouldn't, you'd go manage, then dump data. Dump data, survey in our case, indent uh, equals four, for four spaces, and then we would output it um, potentially to a folder that we created inside of our survey module. So inside of here, uh, no, not inside of there. That's my top secret development notes for this series. We'd create in here um, uh, a directory fixtures. Okay. And then that appears in here. And then we would go uh, survey fixtures. And survey, whoops, um, test data dot JSON. Okay, and then that would output there, and inside of our project, we then hopefully will see that which is empty because I haven't got anything in the actual real database but if we did then we could then use that fixture how would we use it well there's a little shortcut that you can use inside of here in the top of your test class you go fixture fixtures equals and then you make a list and the name of the fixture we want is survey test data dot json now if you did that then that would automatically load in your fixtures into the in-memory database when the tests have been run now to be fair I've I've looked around the internet and uh, I'm not so sure that using fixtures is such a great idea after all I tend to like to make mock objects myself um, pretend objects so for instance if um well what have we got uh, let's do a mock version of a client call to um, the survey questions function so from survey views import uh create is it no survey we could mock the client um in a different way by just basically calling survey directly so we could do our return from here and then do um survey And then we could fake the request by saying method post. And then from there, we could also say um, post uh, name. Actually, that would be name. Name. 
mic for instance okay so by doing that instead hang on have I got it right maybe I haven't syntax error blah 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 actually that's why <laughs> okay by doing that hmm <clears throat> okay I've gone blind and I can't really see why that's wrong but no doubt somebody will be able to send me an email <laughs> and put me right um, however you can fake objects by just basically passing in lists or dicts in and then you could basically make a fixture that way as well um, or a, not a fixture a, a faked or mock object now apparently the, the reason why this is better is because um, sometimes especially if you're calling URLs um, it isn't quick enough to just call it through the client.get or the client put and if you've got a huge amount of tests and you really want to speed that up you can actually save yourself a lot of time by avoiding using the client and call the functions directly from within your tests now that's the hard way to do things and if you haven't got loads of tests and you don't and time isn't really really important to you and you just want to make sure that they work then stick with the normal methods that I've shown you here and if not then at least you have an option to go further and to make things speed up vastly okay right well that's the end of this tutorial thanks for watching i hope that you uh, find this instructional and if you have any questions of course you can email me and i'll do the best i can to help you out and we can even go and have a bit more in-depth conversation about what is it, what it is you're specifically trying to test on your own okay thanks for watching